Hey everyone, in this video, I'm presenting the most powerful feature in the Agency Swarm framework that we've built up to date. So most of you or some of you probably already know that the goal for this project from the very start was to provide you as the developer with full control over your systems. And although we did stick to that closely and there still hasn't been a single parameter or a prompt that you couldn't modify yourself, there still was one feature that was sort of hard-coded for you, which is the multi-agent communication. So although it is still the only framework that has uniform communication flows, which means you can structure your agencies in any way you want, what you can do or rather couldn't do before is change the underlying logic for this feature. So today I'm excited to announce that this has also finally been resolved. Now, there is not a single piece or part of the system that you cannot fully customize to your own needs. And trust me, you can create some pretty incredible things with this. Like, for example, with this new feature, I've already recreated the same type of communication that was used in OpenAI's Swarm framework, which I'll show you how to use straight out of the box in a bit. So without further ado, let's dive in. So to truly understand the whole potential behind this feature, let's first review how it's done in all other frameworks. So if we take a look, for example, at Crew AI, they have three types of processes that define agent communication, but it seems like only two are currently supported. So essentially, it's either your agents are communicating in a straight line, or there is one manager agent and all other agents talk to this one agent. Obviously, this is not how real organizations are structured, and this can be extremely limiting in production. Autogen had the same problem, which is why they added a special speaker selection method, but it's super unscalable because anytime you add a new agent, you will have to manually define those conditions that will determine who this agent can talk to. In OpenAI Swarm, by the way, the communication flows are defined similarly to Autogen, so this means that anytime you want agent A to communicate to agent B, you need to create this new function and then add it to agent A. The problem with this approach is that it grows exponentially in complexity as the number of your agents increases. So with three agents, you only have three possible communication flows between them. But with 50 agents, this number already increases to 1,225. So have fun adding an agent 51 in a system like this. Now, while Agency Swarm does not have any of these limitations, it does come at a cost. And the cost is that this special send message tool that allows you to define your communication flows in any way you want is hard coded. Before it was abstracted away from you as the end user. So there was basically no way for you to change it. And this has come up a few times with developers in our agency. So sometimes there were issues, like for example, our developers wanted to have more control over what the agents relate to one another or to whom they communicate to next, which is a very common hallucination if you have like 10 or more agents. So this is why I decided to add this new feature and it honestly took me so long to finally understand how to do it properly, which is why I'm super excited to see what you guys can build with it. So let's now go over the docs for this new feature and then I'll show you how to use it in your own projects with a live demo. So here's the page for this new feature. It's under advanced usage communication. And the first thing that we're gonna go over is pre-made send message classes. So those are the classes that I've already created for you with some of the most commonly requested features. So by default, we have the send message tool, which has the chain of thought parameter. It has a message and it can also send files and even prompt other agents. So let's take a look at the code. So what's interesting about this tool is that agents not only send messages, but they also send message files and they also can prompt each other with additional instructions. However, sometimes this might be an overkill and when you have like simpler use cases where you only want to send a message, you can use send message quick tool. So it's the same as send message, but it just doesn't have those extra parameters. And the only thing that the agents will be required to provide to use this tool is the message. 
And what this allows you to do is slightly speed up the communication between your agents and also save on token costs. Then we have the send message async threading tool. So this is now a replacement for the previous async mode equals threading parameter. And the only difference between send message and send message async threading is that the tool config async mode is set to threading. So this is also a new feature. I'll go over that probably in another video. But as you can see, this tool is simply extending the send message, which means that it already has all of the previous parameters which were in the send message tool. Okay, and the last one that I've made so far is the send message swarm tool. So this is the tool that recreates the communication type that was built by OpenAI in their Swarm framework. And instead of sending messages to other agents, this tool replaces the caller agent with the recipient agent. So then their user can continue the conversation with the other sub agent directly. So this tool does provide you with more granular control over the tasks because again, you can talk to the sub agent directly, but unfortunately this tool wouldn't be able to handle those multi-step multi-agent tasks. So definitely play with these, see which one works the best for your use case, because oftentimes that's the only way to determine that. To use any of these tools, all you need to do is simply add it into the send message tool class. This is a new parameter under agency in the latest version. So make sure to update agency swarm and then simply put your tool class into this new send message tool class parameter. That's it. However, the real power of this feature is evident when you create your own unique send message tools. So let's quickly try to break down what is required on your end to create your own custom send message tool. And then we'll also go over some common examples. So by default, each send message tool should extend send message base, which is like the bare bones base interface for this tool. Let me pull it up right now. Yeah, and as you can see, it only has one parameter, which is the recipient and everything else if using send message base you will have to add yourself so typically everything else means three things first of all it's the doc string on top of this tool so the doc string is like the description for how your multi-agent communication works in your system so your agents will be able to see this doc string on top and this is how they will determine whether they need to use this tool and how then we have the parameters. So parameters will depend on your specific use case, but typically you would at least want to have a message or it can be something else as I'll show you later. And lastly, there should be a run method just like in any other tool in Agency Swarm. And most of the time, all that your run method needs to do is simply map these parameters into the self get completion method. So say for example, instead of sending messages, I want my agents to send tasks to each other. So in this case, I'm simply going to use the task parameter and then I'm going to add my description accordingly. I'm going to add the doc string and simply map the task into the message when running get completion. So what this allows you to do is have more control over what information agents relate to one another. Although we're still mapping the task into a message in the end, the difference here will be from the default send message is that the agent will think differently about what information it needs to send. It's not going to be thinking about it like a message, you know, like just, hey, hello, it's going to think about this as a task. And for some use cases, this can be extremely beneficial. The next example is adding custom validation logic. So this is also a very common hallucination that occurs with a lot of agents in your agency. Sometimes the agents are simply confusing the recipient agents and sending tasks to a wrong agent. So in this case, you can simply extend the send message tool, which means that this class will already have all of the parameters from the default send message tool. And then you can add a model validator with Pydenic. So this model validator will allow you to check whether the recipient is correct based on your own conditions. So for example, here I'm checking if the customer support is in message. And if not, I'm basically returning an error that the message is not related to customer support. And of course, you can also use GPTs for this. So you can use LLM validator from agency swarm util validators, add your statement like the messages related to customer support. And then if it's not related to customer support, the model validator will then return an error. The agent will see this error and then it will try to correct itself accordingly. The next example is summarizing previous conversations with other agents and adding it to context. So this is just to give you an idea of what's possible here. You can actually add your own custom unique logic inside the run method. So you don't have to just map the parameters into the self get completion method. You can actually do a lot of other cool things before calling the 
get completion method. So here, what I'm doing is I'm summarizing the entire thread between the user and the main agent with GPT-40 mini, and then I'm adding that into additional instructions. So this means that anytime the CEO communicates to another agent, that other agent will already have a complete summary of the conversation with the user. This can be super helpful when you have, you know, extremely long threads. So say, for example, when you have like 30 or 50 messages with the user before the CEO uses another agent, like for example, this is very common for onboarding agents. So in this case, you can use this send message summary tool and ensure that this other agent will already have all the necessary context. And as you can see, I'm actually extending the send message quick tool. So this send message summary will not have the chain of thought, which is probably not necessary because as I said, the sub agent will already have all of the necessary context. And finally, one last experimental example, just again, to show you what's possible here is that actually you don't even have to send messages to agents within your agency. With this setup, you can actually send messages to agents deployed in separate API endpoints. So this means that you can not only build a fully decentralized and self-expanding system, but you can even allow your agents to collaborate with agents developed by other users. So I still haven't gotten to try this myself, but if you guys do get it to work, please let me know in the comments because I think this can be huge. Personally, I believe this is where it's all going in the future. We're going to have agents collaborating with agents developed by other users and getting certain monetary incentives for this, similar to how blockchain works. So try it out again and let us know in the comments or in Discord if you get us to work. And to use any of your custom tools, all you need to do is again, simply replace your custom send message class and put it into a send message tool class parameter. So yeah, that's it. Now let's actually jump into the code editor and let me quickly show you how to use this feature live. Okay, so first of all, let's create a new repo. So I'm gonna do it in GitHub desktop and then I'm gonna name my repo send message test. Okay, so click create repo and then you can hit open in cursor. All right, so of course I'll be developing my agents with cursor because I don't wanna write any code myself. So for this, the first thing you need to do is go to agency swarm repo and here you need to download the cursor rules file. So simply hit download raw file right here, then go back to your project and drop it on the left. So I've already prepared my prompt in advance. Again, make sure to spend as much time as possible on your prompt but here I'm just basically describing all of the roles and all of the agents. So I want to have three agents with the support manager, billing support, technical support, and general support, just to demonstrate one of the use cases for this new feature. So let's hit submit. And now let's wait until all our agents are created. If you don't know how to create agents with my framework, make sure to watch my previous video later, where I showed how to do that without writing a single line of code using cursor. So let's now proceed to creating our own custom send message tool. So I'm going to import send message async trading tool, and then I'm going to create my own custom send message tool class. As you can see, cursor is hitting me just like this. And then we're going to add a new model validator with the validate recipient function. And here the idea is that I want to check whether the message is related either to billing, technical support or general support before actually sending it to another agent. So let me add three if statements. The first if statement is gonna have the general support, second billing support, and the third technical support. And for the validation, I'm gonna use the LLM validator, which is basically a very fast call to GPT-40 mini, which essentially just checks that the statement is correct. So for example, for general support, the statement is that the message related to general support and not related to billing and technical support. Okay, and the last step is to simply add our new send message tool class in this new parameter. So let's now run this agency and then I'm gonna instruct the CEO to send a message to billing with a technical issue like that my laptop is not working. And then the support manager tries to send this message, but of course he can't do that. And then it tells me that it seems that the message content is not suitable for billing support. So of course it's a very simple example but it does happen very often in production when you have a lot more complex workflows. 
And one last thing I want to show you is also how to use the send message swarm tool. So for this, simply import the send message swarm from agency swarm tools send message and then replace it in the send message tool class. All right, so as you can see, the support manager then uses the send message tool, but it doesn't have any parameters except the recipient. And then, as you can see, the technical support actually answers to me directly and tells me that it's here to help with my technical support issue. Could you provide the problem you're experiencing? So if I say my laptop is not working now, as you can see, the technical support responds to me directly. So now I'm no longer talking to the CEO, I'm talking to technical support directly, which actually might be a better fit for this specific customer support agency. So in conclusion, I believe that we have merely scratched the surface of what's possible with this new feature in this video. This is why I wanted to encourage all of you guys to experiment with this even further. To give you some more ideas of what you can do, you can create a send message task queue tool that queues certain tasks and then distributes them to other agents as they become available. You can create a tool that sends messages to two or three agents at the same time, or you can even create a send message tool that not only sends a message, but also gets additional context from a vector database that has all the previous conversations that other users had with this other agent. Although, of course, be careful with the last one, especially if you're in Europe. But if you do create something cool, please open the PR or share it below in the comments so we can all learn from each other. And if you want to learn more about how to build agents with my framework without writing a single line of code, then I recommend you watch this video next. So thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.